Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. All right, guys. So good Super Bowl yesterday, depending on your perspective. Um, I hope everyone did well. Uh, again, uh, you know, yesterday said didn't have any picks on it. No regrets, right? Look, I said my lean was Tampa Bay and the under, but at the end of the day, you know, you're always going to have plays that you think, you know, should I, should I? But I go back and I look at that game and you know what? There is no way that I can get a pick down. And if I do get a pick down, it's only because I talked myself into it. So I think yesterday, um, that was the right play. Just lay off. Of the picks I did get a, give out yesterday that were every bit as important as the Super Bowl, clearly, uh, we went 6-1. and one. We went 6-1. and one. And that means that over the last two days, guys, uh, total, we have gone 17-2. and two. 17 wins, two losses over the weekend. And our only two losses, the only two losses we had were just little quarter unit bets. Uh, one was yesterday, it was a little quarter unit bet on Carolina at plus 190. And then we lost a quarter unit parlay at plus 330. So everything else, we've been hitting. So rock and roll. Um, our props. So we gave out props. Um, we got a lot, a lot of new masterclass members. We get very excited for the props. And I'm happy to say, uh, I announced yesterday we went 27 wins, 14 losses, but that is a lie. Uh, someone actually messaged me almost right away after I said that and said, no, um, we had a push. And we did. So I went back, looked at it, and we were 27, 13, and 1. So um, very, very happy with the outcome for the props. I did cut back this year having 41 props. Um, I was over 50 last year. I cut back a little bit because I really just wanted to like ultra focus on the best props. And I know it sounds crazy when you say 41, how is 41 bets in one game ultra focus? But it is, I mean, you spend a lot of time on the props as I did with these props. Um, so I'm happy, like, you know, it, it, it worked out. It really did work out. And I'll say that, um, you know, in, in terms of the, the game, we, we had a couple props where, uh, you know, we got a little unlucky and we had, and in props, we had props where we got, we end up getting a little lucky, but I'll say all in all with the props, like this ha couldn't have gone better if we scripted it. Like, I mean, a lot of the losses that we had, you know, their thing, like we had Scotty Miller get a touchdown plus 600, um, Brady rushing TD and Brady had a chance at a rushing TD, didn't he? didn't he? And, and I know when everyone was watching that and they're like, okay, they're on the one yard line. What were we all thinking? We're all thinking, get Fournette in there and get him to jam a TD in there. But anyways, look, he ended up getting it. So, um, you know, I, I want, I'm not going to talk too much about it today, guys, but look, I wanted to get back to the whole, you know, the bankroll management aspect. And I think, you know, um, free picks were, were pretty, we're close to battling back to even for the year. We're, we're going to get there very, very soon. Um, you know, we, we had a great last year, um, terrible January, uh, masterclass. Now the people have stuck with it, um, from a unit basis up 10 units since December 31st, up 10 units since December 31st, um, end of January was atrocious. It took us six days, six days to completely reverse one of the worst months we've had in, in years and turn it to a positive. So the people that weather that storm, um, are they going to be up 10 units? No. Why? Because they exercise proper bankroll management. Um, in all honesty, you're probably looking if they, if they exercise proper bankroll management all the way through the month and, and did, you know, what they had to do, uh, they're probably looking at a situation where, uh, people are, you know, even to up one, two, half unit, three units, something like that, right? So, um, but that being said, guys, we are back on the pause of the people that fall through bankroll management. And now, you know, this is this is tough to say, you know, when you're sitting down 20 units and thinking, how are we ever going to get out of this? And I can tell you guys from experience, it normally doesn't take six days to get out. It takes a little bit longer than that to, to get out. But, you know, I said to people yesterday, they said, you know, it was an amazing feeling because, you know, it felt like there was no hope for an entire month. Like, you know, it was just we'd win one day and we'd lose two. Um, and then, you know, just six days, can't lose, right? Um, but I said to people, I said, look, the, the important thing to take out of this is that this is going to happen again. There's no doubt about it because that is sports betting. And it's like, you know, I try to explain and I try to pass along my experience the best I can to people. And, you know, I've been through this so many times and it, it doesn't phase me, but I can see that is perplexing and people like 
treat it as like it's the end of the world, like we'll never win again. And I've been through it so many times. That's why I try to pass along my level of confidence in that, that guys, you're going to go through those losing streaks, but you're going to have streaks like we're on right now as well. And we have more streaks like this than we do of those losing streaks. So are we going to go through January again? Probably this year. Yes, we probably are. If you are not cut out for it. Now, I will say January was especially bad. Um, so I don't, I don't know that we'd have a month that was that bad because January was, was very bad. We had a lot, a lot, a lot of things go against us and a lot of sharps, a lot of top notch betters out there, um, had losing months. They had losing months. I mean, the, the one exception, the one exception, and I don't know how they did it. The one exception to, um, everybody out there, all the sharps who had losing months, the one exception was the remnants and spinoff of, of Billy Walter's old computer group. And I, I honestly don't know how they do it. So I'm not, I'm not going to talk about their picks or, or their record, but I'll suffice it to say they had a good January, um, which is mind boggling to me because I, yeah, anyways, they're awesome. Um, but everyone else, look, losing months. So the bottom line is guys, um, you know, I, I want, I want people to join masterclass. I want people to educate themselves. I want you to watch every second of every masterclass educational video and learn the systems guys. Uh, you know, I, I had a day off last day off and I get people messaging me saying, you know, Bender, I just want to confirm, like, uh, these are the three games I'm on. I look at it and say, yeah, spot on. And what happened? They go three and all in those games. You know, the guy's picking up, picking up a, a second half soccer play, give us second half soccer plays. Okay. Um, smashing them three and oh on those as well so it's like you know this to me is the is the exciting thing this is why like you know i i get up and i do this day in and day out um because you know it's like i can see it's proof of concept people are are into it they're they're managing their bankrolls okay they're making plays on their own they're you know they're continuing their education the education aspect never ends so you know that's that's what i want to see but i want to preface that don't don't join masterclass just to be fed picks, okay? That's not what I want. I do not want to become a tout where I'm just selling you picks. If that is all you would like from masterclass, don't join, okay? Join masterclass because you want to make yourself a better sports better. Join masterclass because, you know, yeah, you want to get some picks and you want to win some money, but join it because you want to teach yourself to fish, right? And I think that is what we have in essence in, in the majority of masterclass members and, you know, the engagement and stuff. So if you guys are interested in that, benderwins.com. But this month has been a valuable lesson this past, you know, well, this starts to 2021. Been a valuable lesson in sports betting, guys, because what have you seen? In just a short period of time, in less than 40 days, what have we seen? We've seen, you know, the worst of the worst. And we've seen the best of the best. And we see that you know, the roller coaster of sports betting. And, you know, when we come out of these downturns, guys, um, it, it's nice that you can look back and say that, yeah, you know, I have what it takes because I weathered the storm. If, if sports betting was just this slow, gradual, you know, incline in our bankroll, everyone would be making money, right? But because of months like January, guys, is why Vegas says, or, well, Vegas doesn't say, they say that, you know, people bet on sports are going to win, you know, one, two, three, four, up to maybe 5% of the population wins. I've heard as low as one, low as 2% long term can win a sports betting, but not here because we have the tools. So I, I apologize for a long rant. I want to get these picks out because this video is going to be a little bit later. Um, but here's what I got uh, I have three plays I'm giving away in free picks. Um, I have two additional plays in masterclass um, and I have, I, I guess I have what I could call a lean slash cautionary tale, uh, a game that I would normally bet on, uh, but I'm advising people not to bet on in, uh, in masterclass. So um, yeah. Uh, anywho, let, let's get cracking guys. And uh, yeah. So again, I, I hope everyone did well in the Super Bowl. Uh, I know, you know, it was uh, it was a fun game for for me to watch and and follow along. And you know what? The, I'll be honest. One last thing, I will say this. You know what? The prop betting, um, I, I do I do it for value, and I do it, you know, obviously to try and make money. But I'll say that that's the one time a year where like the little kid comes out in me when I'm watching the game. And you know, I was watching with my neighbor yesterday, um, socially distancing, but we were watching it in the garage. I got a TV out there, and. Um, 
I, I, you know, I'm going through, like I got all the, like the checklist and everything. And honestly, I felt like a kid just going through and saying, oh, that one and that one. And he could tell how excited I was getting. And I was, I was, you know, happy to see you guys winning too. So, um, let's get cracking on today, guys. Uh, first off, I have a first half college total play for you guys. Um, Austin P and Tennessee Martin, Austin P and Tennessee Martin. We are going to bet the first half under 66 and a half under 66 and a half, um, one unit. All right. Uh, next Edmonton and Ottawa. Okay. Edmonton, Ottawa. Look, um, Ottawa looked sick. Ottawa looked really, really, really sick last time they played Edmonton. Um, since then they've had two pretty decent games. They came back, they beat the Montreal Canadiens. Um, they lost to the Canadians last game, but in the third period, if you guys watched it, cause we had, we had Montreal in that game. They put up a good fight. They did. They, they had their legs under them. Um, you know, they played fairly well defensively. Their goalie really kept them in it. Uh, but you know, they, they, they look like they had a couple opportunities to put the puck in the net and they didn't. So, you know, I like Ottawa or sorry, pardon me. I like Edmonton in this spot. I, I not sold on Ottawa yet. But I'm going to lay off this game in terms of picking a side because ultimately um, I looked at the odds and the odds seemed low to me, to be honest. At, at first glance, it seemed low. I thought, given the performance last time, that Edmonton should be a much bigger favorite. Um, then I look at it and I see three different steam bets all on Ottawa and that lowered the odds even more. So it's like, am I? what am I missing? Um, I'm not going to bet on Ottawa. I'm just not going to do it. I do not have it in my moral fibers to bet on Ottawa right now. Um, I just don't think there's a team, but I feel like this could be a trap line. So I'm just going to go and not bet it. But I'll tell you what I do like in this game. I think the, the real angle to play in this game, guys, is just going back and betting the over to bet over six and a half minus 120 uh, until these teams can prove to me that they can stop the puck from going in their own net you kind of have to lean to the over, right? I mean, look, you guys remember this matchup, right? Before, it, it's it's a shootout, okay? So Edmonton, Ottawa, six and a half uh, over. We got to lay minus 120 for that, but comfortable doing so. All right, so that's the play there. And then finally, guys, um, last play in free picks. We're going to go to NBA and we're going to take Memphis plus two over the Toronto Raptors. Lines come down from three uh, down to two. Uh, again, anytime you have a line like this, what do I always advise? It's not Salt Bay. It's the, spr the sprinkle of money line, guys. Just sprinkle a bit of money line, uh, you know, 5%, 10%, up to 15%. You know, on these plus two, you could go, you know, 15% comfortably. Uh, you know, we want those two points. Okay, we want those two points long term. You know, our systems rely on these two points and they are profitable. But you know, we can increase our ROI a bit by sprinkling money line. And I think this is a good situation for it. Um, but Memphis, guys, I have a system on there. There's five steam and reverse line moves. And just keyed in on this one. I feel bad betting against the wraps, but hey, you got to do it. So um, that's it for us today, guys. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And as always, guys, have a very lucky day.